Good morning. Today, our topic is putting it all together. Primarily, I want to put together everything in Matthew chapter 6, because I think in Matthew chapter 6 is really this day-to-day, year-to-year Christian walk, those overarching things that we see in our Christian life. Of course, there are other aspects to our faith. Matthew 6 is not the entire Bible, okay? But I think in Matthew 6, we are going to see the core of what we do day to day, year to year, from beginning to end in our Christian life. So let's pick up here in Matthew chapter 6 at the beginning. Jesus says, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So here's a call on our Christian action, how we act. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you that you have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you openly in prayer. So we see how we give, how we act, how we pray. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, just like when you give, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you even ask Him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive others when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Now, let's move on to fasting. How do we have the strength to be able to do and give and pray the right way? And when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head, make yourself look good, wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. We keep seeing that thing over and over. When we do what is right, not to get attention, our Father, our Heavenly Father rewards us. If we get attention and praise by men, that's our reward. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And to get to this point, we first had to give and pray and fast to get to the point where our hearts are obedient to our Lord, to one master, to not the things of this world, right? So we just don't start off that way. It's a practice we do. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be healthy and full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then that light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And do not worry. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life or what you will eat or what you will drink, about the body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you Worry about clothes. See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not much clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. 
And the way we overcome that trouble is by prayer, is by fasting, is by giving through generosity. And it breaks that worry of the future, of what comes, and allows us to trust in God. Hopefully that ties it in for you. Have a blessed day. We'll see you guys tomorrow.